And the first one I'm going to go through is Iliad, which, like I said, is a two player abstract strategy game. And in this game, you're going to be playing as either the Blue Warriors or the Red Warriors. And your whole goal here is to try and earn a token for each one of the five different gods, because if you're able to do that and your opponent isn't, then you automatically win the game. But if you are both able to do that, then you're going to be tallying up the victory points gained from those tokens. This game's played on a board that's broken into a bunch of different spaces that alternate between each of the player's colors. And each player is going to be starting the game with a number of tiles, with those tiles having a value anywhere from 0 all the way up to 5. When you set up the board, you're going to be randomly assigning the god tokens around the perimeter of the board. And then there's going to be 5 left over that are going to be just put off to the side. Players will each individually shuffle up their tiles, and then you're going to be randomly drawing 2 and assigning them to your spaces in the center of the board. Players will then draw a hand of two tiles, and then you're going to be taking turns choosing a tile from your hand in order to place it out on the board. Whenever you place a tile, it does have to be adjacent to an existing tile, and you can only place tiles onto spaces that also match your player color. And when you place a tile, you're also going to be checking if there are any new completed rows or columns. If that's the case, each player is going to be adding up the total of the values on each of their tiles in that row or column, and the player that has the higher value is going to be able to choose which token that they want from either side of the board. For example, this side has a minus 10, so you might want to pick the other side and force your opponent to take this tile. But like I said, the victory points don't actually matter if your opponent isn't able to get each of the five different gods. Something else that you'll want to be aware of when you are placing your tiles is the fact that each of the tiles also have a special ability. This can allow players to do all sorts of different things like reposition tiles or tokens out on the board, or even swap their god tokens in their hand with the unused tokens that were off to the side of the board. And what's neat about the ability of the tile with the zero value is that its actual value is the sum of its two adjacent tiles in the row or column that you are currently trying to score. The game continues like this until no more tiles can be played, and then the winner is going to be either the player that has five different god tokens, or the player with the most victory points. As I said, Icor is also an abstract strategy game, but this one does play very different from Iliad, and in this game players are going to be playing either as the gods, or the monsters as they compete to try and take control over the board. This game does introduce some asymmetry as the gods and the monsters do play differently from each other because each of the units will have their own unique power and each of the units are going to have a card associated with them that will let you know what that unit's power is. This is a game that also plays over a series of turns but on your turn you can either choose to move a unit or activate a unit. If you choose to move a unit you can move any distance in a straight line and you're going to be adding one of your player tokens onto any spaces that you move through. This is an important detail because your goal in this game is to try and get all of your character tokens out on the board first because if you're able to do that that's going to be triggering the end of the game and you're going to be scoring points equal to the amount of tokens that your opponent still has off the board. Of course there are some restrictions with the movement and you're going to have to stop if you ever reach the edge of the board or if you run into another figure. But like I said, rather than using a basic move action, you can also use your turn to activate one of your unit's special abilities. And these abilities might just grant you with a better movement action, but they could also allow you to modify, move, or swap units out on the board, or even do the same thing with the player tokens, or even add more of your player tokens out on the board or remove some of your opponents. But these abilities do also come with a fun restriction, which is that these are only one-time use, and after you've used a ability for a particular figure, it's not going to be accessible for the rest of the game, so you're really going to want to time when you use it. But as I said, the end of the game is going to be triggered once a single player gets all of the character tokens out on the board, then they're going to be scoring points based on the number of tokens their opponent doesn't have on the board, then you'll be able to swap sides, play again, and then the most total points at the end of those two games wins the game, and if you do want to check out either of these games, I will have a link to the campaign in the description down below, and of course you can click to get notified.